A rapid increase in muscle size, strength, physical performance, and even mental acuity. These are just some of the many benefits users claim to experience with one of the most studied, reputable, and effective sports supplements of all time, creatine. And that is why, ladies and gentlemen, after five years of being creatine free, I have decided to load on creatine for two weeks straight to see if I would notice any of these benefits. What will happen? This is my two week journey, loading on creatine, but you gotta focus. So I just took my before measurements. Now I'm going to warm up and take my before performance measurements in the form of a few exercises. And then we're going to begin this creatine journey. My first time taking creatine in over six years. So what is creatine, why creatine, and why these performance tests? So the body stores creatine as creatine phosphate, mainly in the muscles. This works as a buffer to help regenerate ATP, or adenosine triphosphate. And in simple terms, once this creatine phosphate system is depleted to a certain extent, the body will start to switch over to its anaerobic system for its primary method on generating ATP. And then eventually, when the anaerobic system is depleted, it will switch over to its aerobic system. Now the important part to understand is when switching from primarily creatine phosphate to anaerobic to eventually aerobic as the primary source of regenerating ATP, generally muscle contraction gets slower and weaker, mainly because every progressing stage is less efficient than the creatine phosphate system. So the idea is if you can have more creatine phosphate in the muscles, then you'll be able to do more rapid, stronger movements for longer than if you had less creatine phosphate in your system. So maybe being able to crank out an extra couple of reps, maybe having a more consistent jump height, maybe being able to hold a max sprint for a little bit longer. On top of these potential performance benefits, creatine can increase water inside of the muscle cells, therefore increasing the volumization of the overall muscle, making your muscles appear bigger in a relatively short amount of time. Now all of this science and theory sounds exciting but will it actually make a difference? Well, that's exactly what I was determined to find out. So after doing our before physical fitness tests and taking our before visuals, I was ready to take my first dose of creatine. All right, guys, we just finished our fitness test. Now it is time for our first dose of creatine in over six years. It has been since 2016 since I have been on creatine. Now there is something called a creatine loading phase, which basically consists of taking multiple servings of creatine throughout the day. I believe up to like 20 grams a day, and that will get you fully saturated in about a week. But because I'm planning to run this experiment for 10 days, what I'm going to do is cut the difference. Two servings of five grams a day, so approximately 10 grams a day. And I'm thinking that'll get me close to fully saturated within maybe 10 days. So the creatine product I'm actually gonna use is this creatine monohydrate by MRM right here. Is this even microionized? HPLC tested for purity and 100% microionized. So microionized just means it's really ground up nice and fine so it will dissolve a lot better and hopefully digest a lot better. A problem with creatine a lot of people have is when they chug it back, it gives them like a stomach cramp because it's not really, I don't think, soluble with water. So we're gonna do a five gram scoop now and a five gram scoop later. I've been six years without you. And now, here we are again. So there are many different types of creatine supplements, all with the same intended outcome, but I chose the most trusted and true, a longest studied and probably cheapest form you can buy, which is creatine monohydrate. And after my first five gram dose, I experienced no ill digestive effects. All right guys, taking a wee bit of a risk here. So I'm about to hit a workout. I'm actually fasted right now, so that means I have an empty stomach. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my serving of creatine right now pre-workout. The problem is I've heard some people have had stomach discomfort when taken on an empty stomach. I'm hoping I won't because that would ruin the workout essentially. But this is an experiment guys. Education, let's do this. 
So yes, yeah, some people recommend taking creatine pre-workout or immediately post-workout. Others say it doesn't really matter when you take it, just as long as you take it. So on day two, I decided to take my first serving immediately pre-workout to see if I'd have any performance benefit or if it would cause me any ill effects. So far, so good. All right, I'm actually gonna do an outdoor calisthenics workout and drive to the workout location. So that'll give some time for this to digest. About like 20 minutes. Feeling okay. So my workout on day two was actually average. Nothing significantly was noticed one way or the other. Some movements felt good, others felt a little bit off, but I mean that is nothing out of the ordinary. Keep in mind this was only the second day, maybe it would take a few more days before I would start to notice any benefits or negative side effects from creatine. Alright guys, I'm going to try something a little on the controversial side today, and that is I'm going to be mixing my creatine with my coffee today. Why is that controversial? Well, because apparently there may be some conflicting interactions between caffeine and creatine regarding water and the absorption in the muscles. I just feel like it can't be that significant. I don't know, maybe this is just a waste of a serving. Hopefully my body will sort it out. A whole scoop of creatine here, 5 grams. I really think this is going to be fine considering I would have caffeine anyways. It's just like I'm taking it at the exact same time. I don't know who's, who takes creatine with their coffee, let me know. Almost a hint of like saltiness. So some purists will say not to take creatine with caffeine because caffeine has a dehydrating effect while creatine is supposed to have a hydrating effect, therefore they may cancel each other out. But I drink coffee anyways and I just don't feel like they would actually significantly cancel each other out enough. Let me know what you guys think about this. Now on another note, some crazy studies I found about the potential benefits of creatine regarding means other than physical performance is the use of creatine supplementation and potentially improving brain performance and health. In several studies, there has been evidence supporting that creatine supplementation may improve conditions such as Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, Huntington's disease, brain and spinal cord injury, amongst other neurological disorders. I also came across some studies showing that creatine supplementation with healthy individuals can help improve their short-term memory. This was actually really cool that creatine could work as a nootropic, so maybe mixing creatine with caffeine, one of the best nootropics out there, was giving my brain an extra boost. Now I've got to be honest, throughout this 14 day creatine trial, I did feel like my work went relatively smooth, and I did feel like I got a lot done. This could just be a coincidence, or maybe the creatine plus my daily caffeine was amping up my brain power. What do you think? By day five, I actually started to feel like I was noticing some increase in muscle size. I feel like my lats got bigger. Look at that. However, did this start to come at a cost? And what was that cost? <sighs> All right, bring it in, boys. Forgive me for a little TMI, but I feel like this is important to document. So ever since starting taking 10 grams of creatine a day, I gradually noticed that my number twos it become more dry. And keep in mind, I've been drinking a ton of water each and every day. Like I haven't decreased my water. In fact, I've increased my water intake since I started taking creatine. But yeah, that's just something I noticed. Maybe it will stabilize, go back to normal. It's just where we're at right now. So if you didn't catch that, I was experiencing constipation approximately every other day. Now a potential reason for this is said to be because while creatine is hydrating the muscles essentially, it may be drawing extra water from the intestinal tract, therefore leaving the individual, myself, with more dry stools. One way to help combat this is to drink more water throughout the day. However, I was already drinking over a gallon a day and still experienced this constipation. Now, another way that may have helped me avoid this constipation would also be to take a smaller dose of creatine every single day. But I wanted to keep this experiment to 14 days to fully load, so I continued with the 10 grams every single day. All right guys, so I'm doing something a little differently today. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take my first dose of creatine intro workout. So I'm gonna mix this with my water, five grams, and 
let it dissolve and then drink it throughout my workout. Hopefully it doesn't cramp up my stomach, but uh, yeah, just thought we'd try something a little bit different today, you know, mix it up. All right. So I actually did a combination of calisthenics and weights this day, starting with calisthenics. Now, like I have been noticing, my muscles looked way fuller than normal. And also, immediately I noticed on this day that some of my movements felt a lot more solid. Like it felt like my shoulders felt more connected to my body, if that makes any sense. However, I did feel the weight increase from this week. And this extra weight did feel like it was kind of hindering some of my calisthenics movements. Now, upon going to the gym, all of the basic lifts that I did felt pretty good. While it didn't feel like I was more intensely stronger, it felt like I locked the weights in the groove of the movement a lot more smoothly. I noticed I was actually able to crank out an extra rep or two on various exercises. And most important of all, when doing arm isolations, I noticed that my arms look bigger than they ever have before for myself which to me was indicating that the creatine was saturating my muscles, causing that volumization. Just the noticeable size alone was pretty cool. So did taking my creatine intro workout help improve my workout? I didn't notice any significant increase in that workout other than what has just been building up over the last several days. So I continued to take my creatine in two servings a day, separated by a few hours. All right guys, just got out of the shower. I wanna try a little creatine hack. I've got some warm water right here. And then I have a serving of creatine right here. The warm water is supposed to help it dissolve better. Yeah, look at that. It's dissolving a lot quicker. Now I was a little skeptical, I looked it up and apparently the warm or hot water is not supposed to damage the creatine, break it down or make it into an inadequate form or anything like that. Now what I'm also going to do is I'm gonna add some honey into this. Kind of make like a honey creatine. What a way to get your creatine in. So my fear was that by heating creatine, it may break down into its nitrogenous waste product, creatine, which would be ineffective and in high amounts could be toxic to the kidneys. However, based on a study I found, creatine monohydrate wasn't degraded into creatine until it was introduced to temperatures above 230 degrees Celsius, which is way above boiling water. So according to this, I had nothing to fear. Now regarding the consumption of creatine, with a simple sugar to help increase its absorption, what I found on this was that the presence of insulin helped increase the rate of absorption of creatine, but may not have enhanced overall absorption. This just means it helps absorb it faster, not necessarily absorb more of it. So whether you consume creatine with a simple sugar or not, should not make a difference in the long run. Creatine and honey was just kind of a tasty treat post-workout. So it is the middle of the second week right now. I'm keeping up with my creatine regimen, approximately 10 grams a day in two servings of five grams. I am now very certain that it is the creatine causing me the constipation. I am usually regular at least six days of the week, usually just every day. But guys, literally for just educational purposes, like it literally has been every other day. You know, I, I get one moving, then I don't. Then I do, then I don't. Literally the only thing that has changed is the addition of this creatine. I really do think that's having an effect. <laughs> Other than that though, I don't feel any cramping or anything in the digestive tract. It's literally just a very dry poo. Also, I do feel like I have been filling out my clothes more. Like I put on a shirt, I look in the mirror, it's like I fill it out more, you know? I feel like the sleeves are a little bit tighter, it felt a little tighter around the shoulders. So that is pretty cool, that's pretty promising. So yes, aside from the constipation, I did feel like I was looking bigger and bigger each and every day. My muscles looked more fuller and I looked slightly more defined. However, even with the slight increase in performance, maybe being able to knock out another rep or two, I felt like my weight was starting to catch up with me and my performance kind of plateaued out. That is until day 12. On day 12, weighing in at my all-time heaviest weight while on this creatine journey, I felt like I actually had a lot of energy and decent body control. For instance, I felt like my vertical jump was improved 
While I didn't practice any specific vertical jump training throughout this entire experiment. Felt poppy. Now doing some basic leg training, I noticed that I was able to crank out an extra couple of reps without getting as fatigued as I normally would have. And a surprising addition out of left field, I don't know what got into me, I was just feeling zealous because I was feeling so strong. I decided to try some muscle ups, which I haven't tried in a long time due to a shoulder injury. And now I do know I was kipping and swinging, but to me this is with minimal struggle. After not doing them for so long, I was able to get up to 4 muscle ups for multiple sets. Just about a week ago I was thinking if I was going to be getting into muscle ups it would be a long struggling process just to get one back again. But that wasn't the case. And then the rest of my workout, every lift felt very strong. Like I said before, it wasn't like I was lifting heavier, but it felt like I could just keep lifting the normal weights I was used to, but for an extra couple of reps. Also, this energy extended into a run post-workout. Yes, it could have been a coincidence, or the creatine could have been doing its magic. What do you think? But ultimately, would creatine loading for 14 days lead to measurable differences? Well, that's exactly what we're about to find out. So I continued taking my 10 grams a day for the final two days before measuring in. Yo, I feel like I'm really filling out this shirt. Hey guys, what are you doing, huh? Did creatine work? Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the final results. Okay, so for real talk, just by like observing myself, I feel like my chest got bigger. I feel like I look more full, but measurably my biceps aren't measuring like a substantial amount bigger. Maybe they are a little bit. Calves seem about the same, but noticeably my quadriceps and my hamstrings and my glutes look so much bigger. I think 80% of the creatine weight literally went there to be honest with you. So that's not gonna be good for calisthenics. So we'll just put it that way. But. Running the physical fitness test, starting with maximum push-ups in two minutes, I actually felt kind of heavy, and I was only able to crank out approximately 55 reps. The pump though is unreal. In addition, unlike my previous max pull-up attempt of 16, I was only able to crank out 15 mediocre reps. Once again, feeling heavy. But looking Dang. super full and pumped in the muscles. Now bench press, on the other hand, I was able to get approximately 10 reps with 185. However, on the final rep, I felt very sketchy on the right side of my pec. It felt like I had the strength, it just felt like my right pec was about to tear. Yo, that felt sketchy as heck on that last rep there on the right side, so I just kind of like... Uh, we good though, we good. We, we know when to stop, fortunately. And fortunately we were right. Now for squats, I was able to rep out 10 reps with 185, stopping at an RPE of about eight. And then to my surprise, even though feeling heavier, I was able to hold for a whole 10 seconds longer than my before time. Look at those fat wrists. Now forgive me for this potentially inaccurate vertical jump comparison, but even so, I don't think there was much improvement in vertical jump. What's up home slice? So it is approximately 10 days after doing the after test for the creatine monohydrate experiment. And over these last 10 days, I have not taken any creatine. That is right, I have stopped taking creatine. I'm clean. The first and biggest reason why I'm not gonna continue taking creatine is the constipation. But on top of that, the reason why I also didn't continue was I just felt heavier. With the exception of day 12, which could have just been a coincidence for me just having a really good feeling day, every other day doing this creatine experiment, I just felt heavier and it just kind of slugged me down doing movements that required more mobility and moving around, etc. And as you can see throughout this experiment and some of my after test results, you can see that while some of my lifts actually may have improved very slightly, my basic calisthenics performance, push-ups and pull-ups seem to actually decrease. Now with that being said, just based on my experience, yes, I did feel stronger. I felt like I could probably do an extra rep or two with this same amount of weight weight, but I didn't feel that much stronger and being an extra four, 
five pounds heavier than the beginning of this experiment, it didn't feel like I was able to move my body weight an extra couple of reps. It was like such a small amount, just put it that way. Now when it does come to sheer overall size and looks, I have to say, without a doubt, I looked bigger in my opinion. I felt like, especially when I got a pump in the gym, that my muscles looked fuller, I looked rounder, I looked just way thicker. And I think if I was just going for sheer bodybuilding purposes, creatine would get a huge thumbs up. And with that being said, I think I certainly shrunk down since then. In fact, I'm weighing in approximately three pounds lighter than when I finished. So now for some additional side effects I did not cover in this video regarding creatine and you know potential concerns people may have. So first of all, with me at the end of my test when I was running through the maximum reps on the bench press with 185, towards the 10th rep, it felt like my right pec was almost on the verge of like tearing, like it didn't feel good. Now there is a hypothesis out there that creatine may increase musculotendinous stiffness therefore potentially increasing the risk of a muscle tear or pull. And this hypothesis I remember was circulated around like long ago. However, there was a study specifically looking at musculotendinous stiffness and creatine consumption, and that study did not find any significant correlation between the two. Now there is another recent side effect about creatine that people recently have been worrying about, and that is creatine and hair loss. So the study that just recently arose about this, I believe it was in 2019, about creatine causing potentially hair loss, was a study with like some rugby athletes where they consumed creatine to see if it would like enhance their performance and whatnot, and it showed that there was a significant increase in those athletes' DHT levels. And DHT, if you don't know, is a more powerful form of testosterone, which a higher level of DHT is correlated with more rapid male pattern baldness. So the scare was that if creatine were to increase DHT levels so rapidly that potentially, like if you were susceptible to male pattern baldness, all of a sudden your hair would start falling out. And I'm, I'm, I'm only taking creatine, you know what I mean? Now, based on just my experience over the 14 days where I supplemented with creatine 10 grams a day, I didn't notice any additional hair falling out or anything like that. With that being said, that's just something to note. And keep in mind, that's not the reason I decided not to take it. It really has to do with the increase in body weight and the constipation thing. So sorry if I'm sounding pessimistic right now about creatine. I don't think creatine's bad. In fact, looking at some of the studies I was researching, a lot of the cognitive benefits, in my opinion, actually seem pretty promising. In fact, if I do decide to take creatine again, I think I'm gonna take it maybe like three grams a day and just kind of take it continuously, not necessarily for the performance benefits, but more for the cognitive benefits. But yeah, maybe in the future, maybe in a couple months, I don't know, maybe I'll take three grams a day and just see how that goes continuously. Maybe I'll make a video on that later. I will let you know when I do that, definitely. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe, more videos coming out. Hope you all have a great day. Peace, I will see you all in the next video.